Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, and this is as much of a surprise to me as anyone, I'm actually going to discuss this latest nonsense. You may have heard about it over the Brexit pint-sized champagne bottles. Liz Truss seems to think is the next Brexit benefit to sell us. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, uh, it is very silly, isn't it? Very silly. After a year of failing to identify any genuine Brexit benefits and only been able to come up with a few that are lies, you know, like our vaccine rollout that is currently in 15th place in Europe and much lower in the world rankings, leadership hopeful Liz Truss thinks she's cracked it with pints of champagne. Now, I wouldn't normally dignify this one at all, but in actual fact, there's a lot to this that is highly symbolic of every Brexit promise ever made. Like, when you look at what Brexit is supposed to have given us, when you go to a Brexit, say, right, what has Brexit given us? And they try and tell you a thing. And, and, and I mean given us as opposed to taken away from us, because there's any number of examples of that. They tend to fit one or more of the following criteria. First, they're either, they're something that doesn't actually help anyone or the country in general. Like, it does nobody any good. Second, it could be that they're things we could have done in the EU. Or third, they could be things that we actually can't do. If anything, it's harder to do outside the EU because it's not just up to us. And this champagne nonsense, which I hope is a dead cat, I genuinely hope it's a dead cat because otherwise it just, it's just another example of just how thick Liz Truss is and how if she's serious about becoming prime minister. She really needs, before she says anything in public, to run things past someone first. But this champagne nonsense fits all three of those criteria. The first and most obvious thing to note is that it is detached from what people really care about. Brexit was sold largely, not exclusively, there's different pockets, but when you look at large demographics that, sold for, that were sold on Brexit, largely working class people, people who were not exactly sharing the benefits of being citizens of one of the wealthiest countries in the world, lots of people in industrialised uh, parts of the country, and, and, and the Tories crushed these people with austerity, then told them that their living standards were being held back, not by their policies, but by the EU. Vote to leave and it will be amazing. These are not the people who are even sipping champagne, much less swigging it by the pint. And I, and I know this is Liz Truss this time, not Boris Johnson, but it just speaks of the complete disconnect that these people in general have that they would even throw something like this into the ideas hat. You know, at the moment, there's a lot of Tory MPs going like, yeah, we, we probably should get rid of Boris Johnson. But he seems to have this connection with working class people. Liz Truss says, don't worry, I, I, I've got the special touch as well. Don't you worry, I'll get these working class people eating out my hands. Pint-sized champagne bottles. It's the, it's the same energy as pork markets, isn't it? Pork markets. You know... And, and it's not this, you do not even throw that into the ideas hat, let alone actually announce it. It's like the Australia trade deal, which I'll be talking about in more detail hopefully later this week. It doesn't actually help anyone. It's a bauble that you're supposed to show people that we're getting things with Brexit. Oh, they say we have these things with Brexit. Oh, we can have pint-sized champagne bottles. Do, do you want that? Well, no, but someone might want it. But if you actually offer it to someone, they get nothing from it. The second issue is that, in theory, this could have been done as members of the EU. It's like the vaccination strategy and the blue passports that look black. Sold to us as Brexit benefits, but they weren't. If we'd have had blue passports all along, we wouldn't even be the only EU country to have them. Similarly, our vaccine rollout was down to us. Each individual member state of the EU has its own healthcare system. We call it the NHS. It's quite famous. It does its own thing. We could still have done our own thing. Some EU countries did. They didn't do very well out of it, but they did. You know, but what we did is we paid loads more for each dose of vaccine than the EU. And we, we are now falling behind the other major nations. You know, that's what we could have done that as EU members if we'd have wanted. Like even Germany, I notice, has now sneaked ahead of us in terms of percentage of the population that's now fully vaccinated. And they were doing surprisingly badly for most of this year. Very poor take up in some parts. But the champagne is the same thing. If we could have market for pint-sized champagne bottles, there's nothing stopping us. It's based on this ridiculous fallacy 
that because nobody else in the EU is stupid enough to use imperial measures anymore, that it somehow became illegal. Oh yeah, remember all those decades when we weren't allowed to get a pint of beer in the pub? No, because that never happened. It's right up there with the non-existent ban on bendy bananas and prawn cocktail crisps. We always had them. The reason we don't have pint-sized bottles of champagne is because nobody wants them. Then the third criterion. We can't actually do it on our own anyway. Because another feature of many Brexit promises is that the liars behaved as if leaving the EU would give us power. In reality, it took it away. It was the same as, as leave the EU so we don't have to follow their rules. We now have to follow more EU rules. Most of the restrictive EU rules are for third countries. You've, you've seen throughout the year various papers like The Express say new EU, EU rule means this. It's like it's not, an EU, it's not a new EU rule. It has been there for years. We didn't have to follow it because we were members. It's a rule for third countries. We're a third country now. You know, see, that's the benefit of being a member. You don't have to follow all those restrictive rules. Now we do. Or if we want to trade with the EU at any rate, and we do. Well, this pint of champagne suffers from the same delusion. Where's champagne made? Just remind me. It's in France, isn't it? Uh, isn't France part of the EU? Yeah. So we left the EU in order to give ourselves pint-sized champagne that would need to be produced in the EU. You see that thing your brain is doing? That's me every day. Every single day. Another nonsense of Brexit. And you try and understand. You try and imagine yourself in someone else's position. How can someone get their mind to accept the clear contradictions? And another thing to note is that it won't happen anyway. Champagne producers aren't going to make pint-sized champagne bottles just because Liz Truss says so. There'd need to be huge demand in the UK for it. Because it's now a largely automated bottle. People will point out, oh, Winston Churchill used to have. Yeah, for a brief period. It was never particularly popular. And also, but these days, the bottling process is largely automated. So you've got a production line. So you'd need to invest in a separate production line. Or as someone suggested, you could, you know, just pour your champagne from the normal, uh, I think it's 75 centilitre bottles into your pint bottle, if you don't mind the waste. But then storage and transport will all need to be reorganised for the different size bottles as well. A fairly serious investment for a producer. In fact, you'd end up with these pint bottles of champagne costing more than the standard sized ones. Now, if the Toffs want to pay more for less champagne, then sure. But I don't really think they do. So I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not sure French producers, who are completely at liberty to do whatever they like in this regard despite being in the EU, are going to be doing so. I mean, for those that like a bit of champagne, Brexit already increased the price. There was an article in which a vintner pointed out that last year a pallet of champagne would cost £165 to ship from France, but that this year it's £265. The only difference on the invoice, they said, was a line saying Brexit admin fee. But that is just an aside for people who actually do drink champagne which for most people is like not at all. And for a significant minority it is maybe now and then as a rare treat. But this sort of nonsense is what we get with everything that the government will try and boast of as a Brexit benefit. Something that doesn't make anybody's lives better at all. Some, something that could have been done in the EU anyway. And something that isn't just going to happen in the first place without the cooperation of people still in the EU. The same thing applies to everything. The passports that are a different colour, we always could have had. But we don't actually help, you know, the, these passports don't actually let us pass ports as easily as the EU wants. Hence the reason for the massive surge over the last few years in eligible Britons getting Irish passports. Because they're better. The trade deals that are on worse terms than the one the EU has. The vaccine strategy that was always ours to form in the first place and has been proven to be more expensive and less effective than the EU Commission's version anyway. The slightly more trade proportionally with countries on other continents because it is now cheaper to export sometimes to the other side of the world than to the other side of the channel. Still more expensive than before Brexit, however, so the profits are much less. 
And whatever other nonsense the likes of Boris Johnson, Liz Truss or any other minister come up with for 2022 to try and justify the increasingly obvious damage, it will be the same thing. It will either be something that, when you look at it, is of no value to anyone. Or it could be something that we could have had in the EU anyway. Or it could be something that is actually made more difficult by being outside the EU. Or it may be a combination of two or more of those things. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.